So you've done all this research about living in Las Vegas, and now you can't decide, should I relocate to Henderson, Nevada, or should I relocate to Summerlin? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about all through this video. We're gonna go through the pros, the cons, and so much more. So let's get started. Hey everybody, it's Dave Baker here with VegasAgents.com and the Modern Times Agent Group. If this is your first time on the channel and you wanna know everything about what it's like to live, to work, to eat, to sleep, and of course, to play in Las Vegas, then tap that little subscribe button and click the little bell so that you'll be notified every time I put out a new video all about relocating to Las Vegas, and relocating to Henderson and Boulder City. Now, if you're thinking about moving to Las Vegas or relocating to Henderson, Nevada or Boulder City, then reach out to me because I'm constantly talking to people all about moving out here and what it's like and helping them with this big decision. So all you have to do is send me a text message. You can write an email. If you want, strap a letter to the Pony Express. Just get in touch with us because it's our passion to help people find the perfect spot for them here in Vegas. So there are a lot of factors when you think about where you're going to move, especially if you're relocating from somewhere far away and it's a new city. And while we all have different things to consider in our move, I think that there are several key issues that come up in the decision-making process that all of us are concerned about. And those are some of the things that I wanna to talk to you today when we talk about Summerlin, which is part of Las Vegas, of course, and Henderson, Nevada, which is gonna to be to the east of the 15. So let's talk about some of the key things that often come up in the relocation and moving conversation. So while everyone might give each one of these a different level of importance, they're all important in some sense because you're picking where you're going to live, right? And that's a huge deal, I get it. I went through the same thing when I was deciding where to go. So number one is proximity to your job or work, right? You don't want to drive 40 miles to work if you don't have to, right? If it's easy and convenient, that makes your life easier. And once again, I get it. Now, if you work from home, congratulations, you might have extra options and that makes things easier. Number two is what I like to call entertainment. Now, keep in mind, by the way, these are not in any specific order, but just a list of some of the top reasons. So number two is entertainment. What is there to do where I live? If you're a transplant from say New York City where there's a lot to do, well, it's gonna be a change if you move somewhere where there's nothing to do. Right? If you come from a downtown like a Portland, Oregon, or you're moving from Chicago to Las Vegas, that's gonna be a big change because you're not gonna have the same walkability. Number three, I like to go with a concept I call overall convenience. And you can lump in there something like walkability, if that's a concern for you, and also proximity to the things and the services that you need. So that could include small things like shopping centers where you can get your groceries, and where you can get other services that you might need throughout your life, such as, is there a dentist office close to me? Is there a hospital around? What if I need something else? What if I need to get work done on my car? Is there a gas station within several miles away? You know, those are things that are part of the overall life convenience package. Next is the, what I like to call the shape of your situation, so to speak. What type of land are you looking for? Are you looking for any land at all? Are you looking for a backyard? Do you want a swimming pool? Is that an option in the neighborhood where you're thinking about moving? The larger the amount of population density, then the less chance it is that you're gonna be able to get some of those things. Then you have to make that big decision. What do I want to sacrifice? Do I wanna give up the yard for a lot of convenience? Or can I get both things? which fortunately, just so you know, in Las Vegas, you still can't. Two other big considerations that I like to look at are number six, 
which is outdoor space. Now, while that's not important to everybody, I think that people are finding more and more that they want to have something that they can do in their own community when it comes to going outside. Even if it's something very small like taking a walk, it's really convenient if you have something like that close by. And number seven, and this doesn't apply to everybody of course, it's for those people who have kids or who are having kids, the school district is a factor for a lot of people when you're making a move because you probably want to put your kids in certain high rated schools. That's a very common question that comes up when people move. And a lot of people will say that it could affect your values in the future. If you're in a great school district, it makes it more desirable. Even if you don't have the kids, right? Keep in mind one day you might want to sell your house. Unless you're moving into your final home and it's your retirement community and you're about to live out your dream for the rest of your life in Las Vegas or Henderson or Summerlin, then it's something that you want to consider. Even if you don't have kids and even if you're not thinking about having them, just keep it in mind because it is something we all have to think about when it comes to values. So let's get started in our analysis of Summerlin versus Henderson. But before we talk about the differences in the two communities, let's talk about some of the things that they both share. Okay, first, both of them, despite their difference in age, are well-developed communities that already are quite mature. And if you're not familiar with that term, a mature neighborhood means that it's largely developed already and that a lot of infrastructure is already available for you. That means you don't have to wait for things like sidewalks to come in. You don't have to wait for a park to have the grass grow. And yes, there is grass in the desert, it's true. What it means is you're not gonna be the only house on the block. Again, depending on where you come from, that's a big change or it's something that you're already used to. Now, while some people like to move into a brand new community, I think that most people prefer to have some well-established parts of the city. Again, the infrastructure, and that's what we'll call a mature neighborhood. Next, both communities have a lot of shopping and a lot of neighborhood shopping centers. So there are all the services that you need, you can pretty much do in your neighborhood. You won't need to drive 40 miles or 50 miles to find something unless there's something very unique that you're looking for. Next, neither Summerlin nor Henderson are on the Las Vegas Strip. A lot of people like to ask me this question when they talk about living in Vegas. It's, do you live on the Strip? Well, no, again, that's like asking, do you live under the Eiffel Tower in France? Or do you live under the London Bridge? Well, no, probably not. And both neighborhoods are far enough from the tourist area that those things won't really affect your traffic and your daily life. So if things are very busy and it's a holiday weekend, you don't have to worry about that affecting your local neighborhood. And I think that's something that locals really appreciate. The only time that I hear about locals really going to those neighborhoods are when there's talk of going to a sporting event, because as you probably know, we have new sports teams out here. Like you've got the Vegas Golden Knights, of course, you know, they made it to the Stanley Cup, right? And now of course we do have a football team coming at this amazing new arena that you see when you drive out there. If you haven't seen it, it is incredible. And I'm gonna put in some info about that in the upcoming videos, all about the sports and entertainment and why Vegas is going to be an entertainment capital. So lastly, I wanna say that both neighborhoods offer a wide variety of housing prices, okay? You have opportunities for condos, townhomes, and single family homes in both Summerlin and in Henderson, Nevada. So don't worry. If you're looking for a small house or if you're looking for a mansion, no problem. You're gonna have those options in either neighborhood that you choose. And there is a huge range of pricing that's available. It's a significant difference from the bottom to the upper echelon of pricing. So depending on your situation, we'll be able to help you 
find something that's in your ballpark and in your range of what you're looking for and you know the lifestyle that you're looking for which is key when you're making a move to a new city all right so first let's talk about henderson nevada now you'll notice when i talk about henderson i often say henderson nevada and why is that well Simply put, it's because Henderson is actually its own city, which is different than Summerlin, which is part of Las Vegas. And we talk about that a lot in the Summerlin video that you'll wanna watch after you complete this video. Okay, so let's start thinking about Henderson and tell you a little bit of the history, and then we can tell you some of the uh, finer points of why you might wanna live there. First, Henderson is a well-established city. It was founded in 1953, so it's almost 70 years old. That means that they've had a lot of time to build it up and really develop the neighborhoods inside of Henderson. Now, geographically speaking, let's remember that Henderson is east of the 15 freeway or Highway 15. So for those people who are moving from California to Las Vegas, for example, it's going to be on the east side of Highway 15 or on the right-hand side, if you will. And if you're driving down, for example, from Northern California, or you're driving in from Arizona, it's still going to be, once again, you know, on the east side of Highway 15, and then also south of the 215, which you'll notice on the map. Now, because Henderson is such a well-established and already built up community, one thing that you'll notice is that there are fewer newer houses there but there's still a good opportunity if you're looking to buy a brand new home. And I understand why you might want a brand new home, especially if the price is right. Now, if you're coming from a place that has a population density, meaning a lot of houses, you know, crushed together in one location, let's say you're moving from New York to Las Vegas, or you're relocating from Chicago to Las Vegas, then this is gonna be a really unique thing because Henderson actually has a lot of space available still to keep developing and building more houses. Even though there are a lot of already built homes and a lot of really great neighborhoods, they're still adding new developments. But there's a key thing to remember. When you see the older, more established communities, such as Seven Hills or McDonald Ranch or Anthem or Green Valley Ranch, you'll notice that the newer homes tend to have smaller yards. So if you're looking for a big backyard and you wanna buy a brand new house, that's something to keep in mind. Of course, one great thing about Henderson and Las Vegas and Summerlin, wherever you go, is there's a good chance you'll be able to have a pool uh, in your own backyard, if that's something that you're looking for as well. And in the summer heat, let me tell you, you will appreciate having a pool, okay? It just makes a huge difference. Another thing that's really great about Henderson is there's, there's opportunity for everybody, okay? That means that you have houses in all different price ranges. So you have houses, you have single family homes, of course, you have duplexes, you have condos, and you have townhomes. So you have a good mix if you're looking for a starter place or you're looking for a place for your you know, fully grown family with your kids and who knows, maybe the in-laws are moving back in with you. It happens now. One thing I also want to mention regarding uh, how much the development is, is growing and how I mean to say how much growth there is in the city of Henderson is that last year we got a new Costco. Now, you might be wondering, why is Dave bringing up Costco coming to town? Well, there was already a Costco in Henderson, but they added a new one. And when you think about a huge corporation like Costco, I mean, I don't know their exact strategy and planning, but realistically, they have a very long-term goal. So they're not just building something for one year or two years or maybe a pop-up store, right? Costco is, uh, is the kind of place that really plans for community growth because it's a huge company and you know they, they have a massive Costco warehouse there in a really nice new shopping center that I was just driving through not long ago and you've got a gas station and you know this huge warehouse and what that means is they're expecting more population growth more people are going to come to henderson so if you're looking on the map you'll want to look right off of saint rose parkway and that's where they built the new costco 
So since we're talking about St. Rose Parkway, let's talk about some of the key streets in Henderson. So let me think for a moment. First, you have St. Rose Parkway. If you recall from my previous video with the navigation, St. Rose Parkway starts at Highway 15. On one side is Southern Highlands Parkway, and on the other side is St. Rose Parkway. So Henderson really starts where you see the M Casino Resort uh, Spa type of place. It's just called M, like the letter M. So that's the beginning of Henderson, and that's a major street where you're gonna find a lot of the commerce, a lot of shopping, and a lot of new development. There are actually new homes in communities directly off of St. Rose Parkway, so it's a major street. You also see new apartments, of course. Um, I mentioned the shopping centers. And when you're driving down the road there, you can actually see the Raiders practice stadium as well. So that area over there uh, by the stadium is going to have some offices. So if you're thinking about moving your office there, or you need to rent some space, feel free to talk to us about that as well. We're happy to help where we can, but that's a commercial area as well. You'll also see off of St. Rose, something called the executive airport. The other major street that is worth noting is called Eastern Avenue. Eastern is a, is a long street that has pretty much everything you're ever gonna need. It gives you all the stores, supermarkets, services galore. If you need a dentist or you know medical offices, they have spa services all over. Almost everything you ever need is actually right on that street. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm a big fan of convenience, which means that things are easy to access and easy to get to. I would say almost everything I need in my daily life is on that street. There's a huge variety of food, by the way. You've got tons of different types of restaurants. You've got entertainment, different types of uh, dessert places. You've got some cake places and yogurt, Chinese food, Japanese food. There's Vietnamese food. There are a lot of American food. You've got some local bars as well. And if you're looking for office space, that might be a place you would place it if you lived in Henderson and you were able to choose where your office is. So remember those two streets, St. Rose Parkway and Eastern Avenue. Now off of Eastern and St. Rose, because they are perpendicular, are quite a few of the communities that we'll wanna show you when you come out and look at places in Henderson. You're gonna see communities like McDonald Ranch, which is an upscale, nicer community with larger homes. And it's definitely in an upper echelon price range. You'll see Seven Hills, number two, which is a also well-developed community that has a mix of homes. Obviously it's called Hills, so you know it's a little bit elevated from St. Rose Parkway, but some of the views there are spectacular. You can actually see the strip from some locations when you're there. Another place in Henderson, a neighborhood or development or community is Green Valley Ranch. Now, Green Valley Ranch is a, also a well-established community. And when you search for Green Valley Ranch, you'll notice that the Green Valley Ranch Hotel and Casino is there. That is the sister property to the Red Rock Casino Resort and Spa that I mentioned in Summerlin that we're gonna talk about a little later. It's a little bit of a landmark. So it's a very recognizable place. There's a great shopping center right across the street with a lot of food and some financial establishments as well. Uh, there's some brokerages over there I see and there's shopping and a really cute courtyard that you can walk through that has cafe lights with little restaurants. Now Green Valley Ranch Casino is, remember, remember one thing, not all casinos purely target tourists, okay? Don't forget that. It's not a strip casino, meaning it's not on Las Vegas Boulevard. It's not on the Las Vegas Strip. The Green Valley Ranch Casino really focuses on locals from what I see. I know that because as a local, we get mail from those places. And they have restaurants, they have events, and they have a swimming pool, of course, and other things there that have a focus on the locals. So as a local, you might be able to go there with uh, coupons that they send you and other little perks that they have, as well as events and giveaways, which are kind of cool, that are for the locals once again. And that is kind of in the heart of the action area of Henderson, which I really consider to be off of Eastern Avenue and where it meets St. Rose. I consider that kind of where the action starts. And Green Valley Ranch is just a little further than there. 
if you were to be driving from Highway 15 towards uh, the Green Valley Ranch Casino. One other thing uh, that people often ask about is retirement communities and gated communities. If you're looking for something more luxurious, what I like to call the upper tier of homes, we have the Anthem neighborhood, which is going to be a higher price neighborhood, but it's a large master planned gated community, which is located at the top of Eastern Avenue as you're driving up the hill. It has a retirement section and it has a non-retiree section as well. The homes there are spectacular, okay? You're going to see significant homes, large size homes, and unique models. What you see there is a lot more custom housing from what I've noticed. You don't see so many McMansions as people call them, meaning those cookie cutter, significantly sized 5,000 square foot homes. And the views up there are excellent as well. When we're looking at the map, behind Anthem, you'll see an area which is actually a national reserve. So that's an area for hiking and things like that. And by hiking, that means very early in the summer to avoid the sun, of course, or throughout the springtime and the fall season. So there's actually a lot of outdoor activity there. Something else I liked about Henderson is that there were some parks and developed outdoor space already. There's also a new walking path that goes along um, St. Rose Boulevard, I believe it's called St. Rose Boulevard or Avenue, I'm sorry. It's, but you, on that path, there are like workout things you can do. You know, there's some uh, physical fitness equipment and it's a lighted path and it goes very, very far down the road. So if you like to ride your bicycle, um, you'd be able to ride it not on the major street. So you, you are on the side of the street, but you won't be bothered by the cars. And obviously it's much safer to ride your bicycle or your electric scooter, or even go for a walk where you don't have to worry about the cars coming so close to you. So those are a few things to help you understand the neighborhood there. And a key factor is that it's much more well-established. It was built significantly you know, a significant time ago, but there are still many new homes there, in, including both custom homes and more cookie cutter or track style homes. But that leaves an option for most people. You can get a starter home, you could get your final home in your retirement community that you hope to live in forever. You could get a family home. Maybe you wanna move into a condo or a duplex or a townhouse. And you have all these types of developments all in one community. And that's something that you don't see in some places. When you come from a place that has a lot of suburbs, for example, you don't really see different types of housing all combined in a certain area. If you're looking for a little more population density, there is also an area, area called Inspirata, where you have a mix of houses and townhomes. And in the center of Inspirata, there's an area for a swimming pool and athletic courts and things of that nature. But there's no commerce there. So it's not a walkable neighborhood where you could walk to get dinner or walk to do your chores or your errands. So although it is a denser neighborhood, there are uh, no commercial centers built into it. But it's not that far from some new commercial centers that are coming. So that kind of rounds out some of the key neighborhoods that are in Henderson. One more neighborhood to look at if you're interested in living somewhere a little more secluded and a little bit unique is Lake Las Vegas. Lake Las Vegas is probably at least 30 to 40 minutes from the Strip if we're using that as a primary reference point. And it's to the east of Henderson. Lake Las Vegas features golf courses. It's got some Italian style homes. It's got its own shopping community, but currently there's not that much out there. The people that I know that were interested in moving to Lake Las Vegas were actually looking to kind of get away from crowds and things of that nature. They just wanted to live in that area. And the lake is very nice. Uh, the golf courses have had a, some rough times due to the changes of the seasons and other things that have occurred, but I think that they've made a nice comeback and you see more greenery there once again. So if you're a golf lover and you want to be a little bit more secluded, we can talk to you about Lake Las Vegas and show you places out there as well, as it might be of interest to you. All right, now let's talk about Summerlin. Again, just as a reminder from the last video, it's Summerlin, not Summerland. 
And Summerlin is actually a, not a city. I almost said a city. It's not a city. It's a part of Las Vegas that's on the northwestern side, but it is not in North Las Vegas. Now, if you've already watched my Summerlin video, you can probably guess that it's one of the most requested places. People often ask me when they're relocating to Las Vegas or they're moving out here somewhere in Nevada, they right away, they bring up Summerlin. And that's probably because it's one of the newest, most well-known areas. It's a massive master plan community. It's not a small neighborhood. And it's been in development since the 90s. Remember, if you'd like some more history on where it's come from and where it is today, you can definitely catch the Summerlin video, which I will link to you at the end of this video. So why is it that so many people are always asking about Summerlin? Well, let me give you a list of reasons. Number one, it's very new as compared to many other cities. So that means there's been a new style of planning and development that probably wasn't done when they started cities like Henderson, Nevada, back in the 50s. Something that I immediately noticed because I like to get outdoors a little bit and ride my scooter or hop on my bike or go for a long walk is how well they pan they planned the paths. They planned the trails and biking paths and areas where you can go where you don't have to walk on a major street or feel like the cars are too close to you when you're outdoors. Another thing they did that I just love is that they created some interconnected parks. So you could start at one park and you could go on a nice long walk and end up in another park. And surrounding you is a bunch of houses and some other athletic things, you know, tennis courts, baseball diamonds, and things of that nature. But what's so cool about it is that the parks are so large that you don't really feel like you're in a desert community. So if you're coming from another desert community, let's say you're moving from Arizona to Las Vegas, or you're moving from Palm Springs to Las Vegas, well, you're gonna notice it's a little bit different because Having been to both of those places, I feel like seeing these parks and the way it's been designed makes it feel like you're not always living in the desert. I mean, you don't wanna just see a bunch of cactus when you move somewhere, right? Sure, if you're coming from Scottsdale, Arizona, or if you're moving from Phoenix to Las Vegas, it might have a little bit similar feel with the housing, but it's definitely different than other desert communities that I've seen. So let's think for a second, what else is it that people love? Well, there is downtown Summerlin. Now, downtown Summerlin is not a city center, like a downtown where you go to work. And again, if you live in one of those environments where you're moving from say Los Angeles to Las Vegas, well, going to work downtown has a specific meaning. But downtown Summerlin is actually a shopping center. And it's very new and quite well designed. It's got things for both adults and children, which makes it fun to hang out there all day. During the holidays, there's actually a little train that they had going around for the kids. I think there was some sort of ice skating, although I might be a little too big for the boots at this age. But there's a lot of stuff going on there. And it also sits on the edge of the Red Rock Casino and Resort, which is a place where locals also like to go. Now, downtown Summerlin is a massive shopping center, and it reminds me of some other big outdoor shopping centers I've been to in other cities. Like uh, if you're coming from Newport Beach to Las Vegas, you might think of Fashion Island. If you're coming from uh, Oregon, they have some outdoor shopping centers as well that I've seen like that. It's different than what I've seen on the East Coast. So if you're an East Coaster and you're moving from the East Coast to Las Vegas, it's different than what I usually see when I'm there, which is more strip mall style. It's kind of a place where you can hang out all day. You've got restaurants, you've got uh, snacks, dessert, you've got other places for entertainment. You have endless shopping, which of course everybody needs to have around them. You've got covered areas uh, for the desert, so don't worry, it's not too hard to walk around. There's some water features. It just makes it lively and nice when it's hot outside. And when it's cold outside, they kind of give it a winter feel and design which is a fun place to go. On top of that shopping center, there's a lot of other centralized shopping in that neighborhood. Now, I will say there are not many local 
little shopping centers that would be right next to your house. Now, not everyone is concerned with that. Some people like to drive to a centralized place when they want to do their shopping or get the services that they need. But if you're used to having like a local bar or local cafe that you walk over to, you're not really going to get that in the Summerlin neighborhood. If you're watching my videos, you know I love convenience and I love walkability, but that's not something we have in very many parts of Las Vegas. You'd have to live on certain very specific streets. There is a condo complex or a townhouse area, I believe, that we can show you that's pretty close to the downtown Summerlin area where you could walk. A lot of it is going to be bikeable, so you could ride your bicycle there if that's something that interests you. But it is a driving town, so it's reasonable to expect that you will be taking your car wherever you go. It would be great if every neighborhood had its own little micro shopping center, but that's not the master plan design that they created, which you can actually find online. And it shows you where it's come from and where it's going. And that's a lot of what I was talking about in the Summerlin video. So if you want to learn more about Summerlin, when you're done with this video, you'll want to hop onto that one and learn all about that uh, history and what the design is like. Now, one good thing on top of that, uh, the shopping and the centralized services and all the different things that are there is that you never need to leave the area. You don't need to leave Summerlin for something. For example, like I, you know, I keep saying shopping, but that includes many different things, of course, right? That's not just grocery shopping. That's uh, other things you might need if you're doing back to school shopping, if you need to get something for your pets. All that stuff is located in a convenient centralized area, which is very practical. And personally, I don't like to drive, you know, 30 miles to pick up something and have to schedule my weekend for a specific pickup. There's also a Costco out there, of course. You've got all the major furniture suppliers and different things that you might need to make your house beautiful. Especially after you purchase it, you're probably gonna wanna pick up a little new furniture. Even if you are moving your, your current belongings, it's always a nice touch to add something new, to personalize it. And all that stuff is really right there. That makes it very easy. So let's look at our checklist here so far. We have convenience the centralized area with downtown Summerlin and where you can go shopping and complete your other errands and tasks. You have the bike paths, the trails, and the parks, which are, again, well-placed and well-positioned in the community. But now let's jump into another key topic that people are always going to ask. And that is, well, how much does it cost to live there? Or can I buy a place there? And I would say the answer is, Probably yes for most people because you have a good mix of development types in the subdivisions. You have single family homes, you have your condos, and you have townhomes. And the interesting thing is that you get multiple types of design of, for the houses in the neighborhood. So you are not going to just see what I like to call traditional desert housing. You have neighborhoods that are gated and you have neighborhoods that are open and when you drive through the different neighborhoods you'll notice there are some that have an italian or tuscan style you see newer styled homes that some people call modern or contemporary where you'll see flat roofs you'll see some with multi-level roofs that is sometimes referred to as a modern prairie design and you'll also notice there are or has been an introduction of some new color schemes. It's not all tan and brown and mode color and different types of stucco on the outside. You'll see different color homes now. I'm seeing that more and more, which is nice to see in the desert because again, if you come from a desert community like Las Vegas or like Arizona, you're accustomed to seeing a lot of similar styled homes and similar, similarly colored homes. So it's nice to see these new communities. They've also done a great job in designing the communities by building walls uh, along the road that have some color variation. And they're broken up sometimes by parks, which obviously you've heard me mention several times, and I love that. But what's the overall feeling that I think makes people always ask about Summerlin? I think that it's the feeling that it's clean and new and fresh. So 
when you go to Henderson, you're going to see a mix of some new homes, which are obviously being built by developers that are making a significant number of homes, but you're really going to see a lot of older, more well-established communities where the homes have been there for some time and they have a different design. It's not always a dated design. They do have modern homes as well, especially some of these amazing new ones we would love to show you from one of the developers. They are, they're fantastic. And uh, if you're interested in a modern style home with a, you know, a lot of cool electronics and home automation and these unique wine cellars and theater systems, definitely mention that when you reach out to us, when you send me a text or when you send an email, I've got to show you those places. They always get my attention. In fact, one of the, my favorite homes I've ever seen out of thousands of homes that I've been in in my life is designed by a builder that I love. And I'm happy to tell you all about it and it's incredible but that's the thing right there it's that new fresh feeling when you're driving through summerlin it looks like it's been designed it's a little bit more modern in the structure of the entire master planned community it's not that you would see those random houses as i've referred to them in past videos that pop up in the middle of the desert it's just that it's laid out quite well, so it's easy to go from one subdivision to another, go from one community to another, or connect to a park or a trail, or get to a shopping center. The roads are laid out nicely in a nice formation that was obviously planned ahead of time. And that makes a difference. If you've never been to a huge master plan community, there are only a few that I can really think of. One that always pops in my head is Irvine, California. And if you're moving from Irvine to Las Vegas, the most likely place that will look familiar to you is probably Summerlin. And that's another example of a master plan community where they laid it out in advance and the developers and builders and other people didn't just come in and make changes and establish small communities inside of a, a city. It was laid out in advance so we knew where it was going. So what else is there? There are a few other things that I think people like. You have a feeling of community that I see there. I'm on a couple mailing lists, of course, and I also just go to the community. And there are community events and things that go on there, whether it's a farmer's market or something going on at downtown Summerlin for the kids or just other events, music in the park, things of that nature. You get that feeling of community because you've got your your development or your subdivision inside of the master plan community and you get in you know you get invited and a feeling of kind of like a feeling of family your community is part of summerlin and therefore you all attend these events together and it's nice to have those things and that's something that i find that people seem to be looking for as well they don't just want to necessarily move there and then not meet anybody or you know, just be in a place that's distant and far off from the rest of the other housing and the other people. So if you're looking for something like that, you can also find that there. So overall, my vibe when I think of Summerlin is that the master plan made a difference. You have all the different things that you need to do in your life in one area. You've got shopping, which we've mentioned many times, hopefully your ability to work there. You've got events for the community. You have your walking, hiking, and biking trails, and then you have outdoor activities, as well as lots of entertainment. So it's all right there. Now, if you're self-employed or you are going to have to find an office when you come out here to Summerlin, well, there are, is a lot of office space available too. You have some really nice class A buildings that are very close to the housing and that makes it a very easy commute. You might be able to bike there. You probably won't be walking there, but it sure would be nice if you could just take your bike one day instead of driving and enjoy the outdoors a little bit. But yeah, if you are in that situation where you're looking for office space, make sure to let us know as well because we have some contacts. We'd love to help you with that. But what's important is that it's there and it's close and it's efficient. But if you work in Henderson and you live in Summerlin, that's a serious commute, okay? That's not a five or 10 or 15 minute commute. 
it's a drive. You have to take one freeway, possibly do another freeway, although you might be able to st stay on Highway 215 to get all the way out to Henderson, but it's, it's a commute. So something you always wanna to mention to us when you contact us is where you're gonna be working or if you're moving to Las Vegas to go to school, make sure to bring that up as well because that will help when we look at the position on the map, what, what community is right for you, what's going to make your life easiest and most convenient. Now, if you love being in the car and you wanna to listen to an audiobook, sure, maybe a little drive is relaxing, but there is some traffic in Las Vegas now. It's not like it was 20 years ago. We've grown a lot, a lot, a lot, which has its ups and its downs. But mostly I'm seeing pros from it because what you're getting is more businesses, more entertainment, more things to do. We've got water parks. We've got a lot of different interesting things that you can do all in the vicinity of where you live. So, it's really going to be something we're gonna to wanna to show you if you've not been here to these different communities. We're comparing Summerlin to Henderson, but there are many other parts of Las Vegas, obviously. There are many different communities that we're gonna keep talking about and that I'm gonna keep bringing to you in the videos. But I'll tell you the top three places I hear about when people talk about moving to Las Vegas is moving to Summerlin or potentially relocating to Henderson or going to the Southern Highlands neighborhood. Those are the most common requested places. Two other things I do wanna mention about the Summerlin neighborhood is that you do have the Las Vegas ballpark out there. That's where the aviators play, the minor league baseball team, but obviously other events take place there as well. So if you're into those types of things and you wanna be around a sports arena, it's not the Allegiant Stadium where the Raiders are gonna play, but it is another significant part of the community. And there are events that go on at the Las Vegas ballpark that you'll definitely probably attend at some point. Did you like how I said definitely, probably? You see, what happens is when people move to a new place, they think they're not gonna do something, but then eventually they keep going to those events over and over again. I know. It's what happened to me and it's what happens to so many people. But that's the fun of moving somewhere new. So I've covered many of the key parts of Summerlin that will come up when you're looking around at different places. But remember, what's important is to find the place that's perfect for you. So first you might want to establish if you're looking for a single family home versus a townhouse or a condo, or if you're looking for a retirement community. And from there, will help you narrow it down based on your additional needs. All right, so now that you've had some time to learn about the different neighborhoods, you've got Henderson and you've got Summerlin, and you've probably got a lot to think about. But I think that once you look at the two different neighborhoods and you analyze what you're really looking for, as well as where you need to live for work and what type of home appeals to you, as well as what type of community appeals to you, you'll be able to make a decision a little bit easier. But don't worry, we're here to help you with this. So I want you to make sure to reach out to us and contact us today, because like I said, I'm always talking to people about this. And as I personally drive from community to community, I go from Henderson to Summerlin all the time, actually, because I like to do things in both parts of town. And I have a lot of my own opinions, of course, but my team also has their opinions that they can share with you and some insights they can provide to help you find the place that's perfect for you. So don't forget, send us a text message, send me an email, give us a call 24 seven, because we have your back when you're coming out to Las Vegas, when you're relocating to Henderson, no matter where you wanna live, whether it's Summerlin, or even if you wanna go out to Boulder City or Lake Las Vegas, we wanna show you our favorite spots and help you find what's right for you. So until the next video, thank you for joining me and I will talk to you soon.